Hi, Steve Stahlberg here with monthly painting video number 55 made in Kuala Lumpur, June 2018. I numbered it 55A because now it seems I'll be doing the original 55 as 55B. Um, it got out of hand again on the planning stage and grew in scope a bit too much. As they say in the in game industry, I'm often the victim of feature creep when designers keep adding features after it's supposed to be locked down. So, being out of time, I decided to do a quicker one this month. Uh, this is supposed to be a cutified character based on a reference photo of actress Joanna Frank, which you can see here. It's, it's this one here. So, that's my reference. So I started sketching here, and uh, I used a white background this time due to the minimal pre-planning, and also I'm actually not sure what color the background will be yet. As you saw, the reference photo is black and white, so there's no help there. Um, so partly also for this reason, I stay with gray tones in the beginning when I start the actual painting, which you will see in just a few seconds yeah right here and I've st started with um, an intermediate gray of course um, and then since she ha there's a lot of black in this photo she has black hair and I'm starting with black there's actually not a lot of much lighter tones. They, I think already at this stage, I think I have pretty much nearly covered most of the tonal range right now. Of course, I'm going to have to be more subtle and uh, uh, refine it much more. But basically, if, if I zoomed out uh, or if you squint at this now, it, it's actually quite similar to the to the photo at the moment. But I need to add color, so I'm selecting the area, the, the most important area, which is her skin and her clothing. I'll do the clothing last because that's not as important. But um, doing some tweaks first to her face. Cutting and doing surgery, cutting pasting, moving stuff. You'll also see me using warp and liquify. And I have added the uh, like the major skin color sort of an orange orange peach. But as you see it's still uh, just a, a flat single color without any variations and right now I'm actually even adding still adding black in uh, in uh, different tones gray tones or black opaque that I whited I whitened the eyes a little bit here I'm adding I'm starting to add white to model the skin a bit more what I usually do is I apply white a little bit too strongly and here I'm liquefying I applied a bit too strongly and then I color pick and undo and then use the the color pick tone which will be a si like an intermediate color between the original one and the white that I applied and then I use that intermediate tone to to keep working on the highlights and I'm still adjusting the the drawing so to speak the basic construction and I uh, made the skin more reddish here and now I'm starting on the eyes yeah I thought the skin was a bit too yellow before and maybe right now it's a bit too red also like a little bit of a suntan going on there but uh, that can easily be changed later 
and uh, putting the highlight on a separate layer because I'm going to have slightly different highlights on the two eyes but I'm going to copy this first eye over to the other eye like that it's just a, a way to save time and they do have to be they do have to be exactly the same size so that's just a quick way to make sure that they are and as you see I start with the iris the pupil in the iris and then work outwards from there I don't start with the uh, the eyelashes I don't know I find it easier because you know the iris is perfectly round so it's yeah I, to me that's the easiest part of the eye to, to get right you just use the Photoshop uh, circle circular selection tool and you or the, the only creative decision you have to make at that stage is the size of it and you can actually change the size later if you leave it on a layer and I have left them on a separate layer for now later I drop them down and I'm back working on the highlights and the skin on your face The lighter parts of the skin already actually look cooler by comparison to the darker parts simply because I mixed white in it. That White has that effect. But later on you'll see me actually pushing that effect even more by adding grayish white into the mix by using color, color mode mix on the brush. You'll see. And also strengthening the effect here I'm starting with the, the lipstick and the rouge and also a little bit of more warmer blood color on the nose and the eyelids and then I go into the shadow parts you see the shadow on the neck right now is kinda greenish looking that's because there's only black added into it on top of it, the the peach color now that has to have red and added into it and I'm about to do that now similar to what I did on the cheek there and the forehead but right now I'm working on the face the nose here comes the red on the neck and you can see how much more alive it looks when you do that this is what this is what skin color is all about you have to be quite warm in the shadows and and quite cool it's difficult to say exactly how cool how cold or warm the different uh, hues have to be but uh, just start with uh, start with a neutral color in the middle like if if it's a white person kind of like peach peachy pink middle middle tone and then add white and black to that and then like like I did here add red to the to the dark parts and you'll see soon what I mean yeah shifting the whole image a little bit she was a little bit too suntan she, she's looking less suntan now maybe a bit still a bit too hot like reddish hot all over the image but it's better to go a little bit too hot my taste anyway than too cold of course it depends on the lighting also it depends on the lighting and also note that the uh, under the eyes the lower eyelids I'm keeping them I'm, I'm being careful not to put uh, red into those because they are actually usually cooler in color that particular shadow right there is usually cooler than say for instance the ears or the nose other areas where there's a lot of blood visible like fingertips toes elbows knees I'm refining the lips a bit here. You saw before I started they were quite rough because I had only 
sketch them roughly from a distance at first. So we'll just zoom in and refine them like this. Careful not to sharpen the lips too much because all the facial features have to be they have to be usually most of them have to be slightly soft. Like it. even the eyes, the iris soft outline, uh, the pupil a soft transition to the iris. Uh, all the edges in the eye and the nose has to be soft too and the edge of the lipstick has to be soft it can't be 100% sharp I'm playing with the fade feature here I find it easier to control adjustments when I do that do it that way going back to the eyes adding a kind of a cool shadow to the outer rim of the iris like I just mentioned the transition from the iris to the white of the eye the sclera has to be has to be somehow not a hundred percent sharp and that transition is usually cool so that's why I use that bluish color there the eyebrows sharpening up quite simply by s by simply using a thinner brush in a close up and removing some of the original thicker brush that I put it helps if your original first layer of sketching isn't very strong like it's muted or or faded then you can put your thinner marks in with a little bit more strength a little bit more opacity That way you don't have to completely repaint the whole thing, adjusting the lower half of the face here. Because it's just a big pain in the neck to have to completely redraw the whole face, first roughly, then more refined, and then may perhaps sometimes even a third time. Now here you see I'm using these, this cool color colorization trick, and also warming up the nose tip even more, the shadow of the nose, the darker parts of the nose. Just the, the lower part of the nose. The, the upper nose, like the nose bridge, doesn't need to be warmed up usually. There are cool parts of the face and warm parts of the face, but it also depends on where the light hits and how the light hits. The gradation between the, the shadow terminator, as I say. Now, this picture doesn't have any terminator really in it. It, uh, the terminator passes pretty much along the edge of the jaw and the chin you can't really see it, it's difficult to see so but I, I did take extra care to try to warm up the edge of the jaw, the cheek the edge of the chin, not the whole chin, just the edge and the hairline is visible right at the top of the forehead that usually also turns out to be a bit warmer than everything else I'm not sure why, maybe it's because of the light is filtered through the hair roots now I'm working on the hair here and I added some I started on the background and the blouse and I decided uh, finally I settled upon a choice for color choice and I decided for cool colors which is kind of natural um, kind of predictable but you know you usually want to set off the the important part of the painting is her face right so you, you want to kind of contrast and set that off in a nice way and cool colors will do that if if the uh, if the skin color is presented quite warm as it is here yeah i'm trying to make the background look a little bit out of focus like a bokeh effect b o k e h um it's not it, it's not perfectly believable and, and realistic because it's it's darkened so uh, bokeh doesn't go dark like this but I, I just after I started doing that effect I I felt that I wanted the background to be darker and and I just tried it out and 
it kind of seems like it works. Here it is, the finished one, and uh, the changes I made from just before, just before now, was I raised this part up a little bit, moved her whole head a little bit to the to the left here to make it less uh, symmetric. And I think that's it. There's some shape shifting there right at the end. Yeah, I think I. I think I went through everything. I, I applied a little bit of sharpening as well as you can probably see. Uh, yeah. Hope you like it. Let me know if you have any feedback or questions. Thanks for your support and see you next month. Thank you. Bye.